So what do we know in this problem? We know that m and p are positive integers, so they could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. But we're also told that the sum of their squares is under 100. And this question wants us to try to maximize their product, m times p. Now let me try to simplify this question a bit. If it wasn't giving us the sum of their squares, if it was just giving us the sum, all right, in general, if you know the sum of two numbers, and you want to maximize their product, you'd want those numbers to be as close as possible to each other. For example, if the sum of two numbers is 10, if those numbers are 0 and 10, their product is 0. If the numbers are 2 and 8, their product is 16. If the numbers are 5 and 5, the product is 25. So to maximize the product of two numbers with a given sum, you'd want those two numbers to be equal to one another. The closer the numbers are to each other, the greater their product. Now in this case, we're not being told about their sum, we're being told about the sum of their squares, but it should work somewhat similarly. We can quickly test a case where m and p are as far apart as possible, so I guess one of them would be 1, and then the other would be, if you want to make it as far away from 1 as possible, it would be 9, right? because 1 squared plus 9 squared is still under 100, but 1 squared plus 10 squared is already more than 100. So in one extreme case where we push m and p as far away from each other, their product would be 9. And that's not even any answer choices. So if I go to the opposite extreme where I try to make m and p equal to one another, how big can they get? I'm thinking about perfect squares, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, and I'm thinking 49 is as far as I can get, as close to 50 as I can get without actually hitting 50. And the reason 50 is significant is because we're told that the sum of the squares is under 100, so each of them would have to be under 50 if we're going to make them equal to one another. And what I like about 49 is that if both m and p are 7, then the sum of the squares is 98, which really pushes us very, very close to the limit. I can't imagine another scenario that would bring us even closer to 100. I mean, I guess it would have to be a sum of 99, but there's just no way to get to 99 by adding two perfect squares. We're already fairly limited by being told that m and p are integers, because that means that m squared and p squared are perfect squares, and there's not that many perfect squares under 100. The fact that I managed to get all the way up to 98 by adding 7 squared plus 7 squared makes me very comfortable with the idea that having m and p both be equal to 7 is the best we can get. And the product of 7 times 7 is 49. Now pay attention also to the answer choices. The only answer that's greater than 49 is 51, and 51 is only a product of 1 and 51, or 3 and 17. But m and p can't be 51 or 17 because squaring that would get us way above 100. So that's kind of another way to feel confident that you've got the right answer. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.